Rabbi Moshe Hauer is the executive vice president of Orthodox Union. Joining us, uh, Sahar Tartak is a student at Yale University. And Ken Marcus is the founder and chairman of the Brandeis Center for Human Rights under law. A little backwards there, but you get the, the, the all three here, they have testified. Thank you so much for coming on, uh, all three of you. And it's such a heavy, heavy topic. I mean, we talk to Jewish students uh, many times on this program, and the sentiment is this, we don't feel safe on campuses. We just showed you this, uh, this pro-Palestinian um, protest that happened that turned violent in D.C. Six officers injured, an arrest was made, yet you can have 300,000 pro-Israel uh, protest, pro protesters come out, not one arrest, not one violent incident. Rabbi, can I go to you to, to talk about this, dealing with the increase in anti-Semitism across college campuses and why you're seeing violence on one side and really not the other in comparison? Uh, it, it, I, I don't want to venture on the why. I just want to dwell on the what. What you just described is the fact, is the reality. Uh, Jewish students on campus would like to be able to live without fear. They'd be, like to be able to express their identity without fear. They'd even like to be able to express their, their, their trauma, their concern for the safety of their people in the United States and in Israel without fear. Uh, when the Jewish students gather together, typically, they stand in a circle, they sing songs of compassion, prayers for peace, and so on and so forth. Uh, if if uh, we're going to overuse the term safe, that might make some people feel unsafe, but nobody's going to feel physically threatened in any which way whatsoever. Uh, that has not been their experience with those who are demonstrating and chanting slogans uh, that are code words for genocide, that uh, basically express a desire and a wish that the Jewish students do not exist, neither on campus nor, 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 nor anywhere else. Uh, they do not, they, that make them feel threatened. And this is not the United States of America. We never imagined that this would be happening in the United States of America. We, our, our history is filled with it, but we believed that the United States would be the exception. And we are urging and working and cajoling and finding ways to help government make sure that it will just be a little blip and we're going to get back to this being a land where Jewish people and Jewish students on campus can feel safe and respected and, and welcome with their identity. And Ken, as you uh, go to Ken, and again, Ken was the one on Capitol Hill. And Ken, as you well know, and you were pointing out, unfortunately, um, in this moment right now, that is not where college students are of the Jewish faith. That is not where the country is right now of those that are pro-Israel, as we were showing again that cl those clashes with Capitol Police last night. Th those are pro-Palestinian protesters, and uh, you see pro-Palestinian protesters on college campuses, and again pushing back on pro uh, pro-Israel protests and seemingly not allowing them. Uh, you're, you're seeing some of the video here. Ken, can you just um, summarize some of the things that you said, maybe some of the things you've heard on Capitol Hill, uh, how you're feeling today, and, and maybe if you want a reaction again to seeing that DNC protest last night as well. Sure, I'd be happy to, and as you've just corrected, that was uh, my testimony a few minutes ago. Rabbi Hauer also testified, but he was the more eloquent one. Uh, what we are seeing is something unlike anything on American college campuses, uh, certainly um, in our lifetimes. Uh, it is the gravest crisis, uh, and it is shocking that this should be a surge in anti-Semitism in response uh, to the savage uh, murder and rape and torture that we saw in, in Israel. Uh, we are not seeing uh, this sort of violence coming out of uh, uh, pro-Israel rallies. What we're seeing is violence coming out of uh, anti-Israel uh, uh, protests that promote Hamas uh, and its atrocities. And I wanted to get to Sahar, if I can, with this. I wanted to play a soundbite, if we could. Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, DEI, those programs, they came up on college campuses at the hearing. Another witness at the hearing, Stacey Burdett, saying these programs haven't been able to handle anti-Semitism. Here's a clip. Diversity, equity, and inclusion work maybe wasn't set up to anticipate a group of mostly white people scared of hate crimes but it can be enhanced. And the people that I work with have adapted and are protecting Jews now. So, Sahar, listening to that, you're a student at Yale. Do you feel DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, is properly 
addressing anti-Semitic threats as a student? No, of course not. I, in my testimony, described a number of horrifying pro Hamas, anti Israel campus experiences that were either spearheaded by groups of students or by university departments and faculty to which there was no response and no DEI attempts to protect students. And the reason for this, quite possibly, is along the lines of what the witness said that. These DEI programs know they're not equipped to fight Jew anti-Jewish hatred because, in a way, part of the categories, part of the boxes that they place people into is what anti-Jewish hatred flows out of, right? So the oppressor-oppressed dichotomy and the white people of color dichotomy chooses, and it doesn't have to because I'm a Persian Jewish woman, it chooses to place Jews in the white oppressor box and place Israel, which, again, also mostly non-white, in the white oppressor mm-hmm. box and refuses to acknowledge Islamist anti-Jewish hatred, which exists as well. Can, uh, can you respond to that? Yeah, I mean, it's a shame because DEI programs are intended to protect minorities and, in fact, in some cases are making the situation worse. Sure, there are good people in DEI, uh, but the fundamental ideology that we see too often in DEI programs is based on assumptions that people are either oppressors or oppressed. Uh, And not only is anti-Semitism not part of that story, but when Jews are mentioned, it's too often based on stereotypes about Jewish power, viewing Jews, all Jews, as being white oppressors and actually fueling uh, the hate that is aimed at the Jewish people. Rabbi Howard, your thoughts on DEI on campuses and again, uh, the the thought of that protecting uh, Jewish students, is it doing any good? We, we are not getting any positive reports about it, uh, generally speaking. As Sahar said, and she's reporting from the ground in what be, may be the most prestigious university in, in the United States of America. Uh, from Yale. And it's not atypical. It is, It is in fact, typical. And you need to understand that this is a moment of disorientation uh, for the Jewish community. But what I mean by disorientation is that we are guided and driven by a principle called, in biblical words, v'haftem et hager, thou shalt love the stranger. Uh, a fundamental Jewish ethic is to be there for those who are otherwise unsupported, for those who don't have a community, who those who have joined the country. And we drive that, and we stood there for side yeah. by side, yeah. leading in all areas of progressive, uh, of, of, uh, of progressive effort to, to, uh, uh, to help the underprivileged, sure. to help many of those that DEI comes to protect. Right. And today we need their help, and we, we can't find them. We'll leave it there. Rabbi Howard, thank you so much for that. Uh, Sahar Tartak uh, joining us again with your, your thoughts and what you've experienced, as well as Ken Marcus. We appreciate it.